there are so many, so many, so many opportunities that that we present. Um, so, oh, let's see. So right here, this is our this is our motto: hard work, low pay, miserable conditions, and more. <laughs> a lot of people ask, like, why is that your motto? Like, why would people want to join, right? And you know, it it it's a valid question, but this is our motto because first of all, it's true. Um, hard work, that that's what you're gonna be doing here. We have fire crews where we go out and fight fire. We have trail building crews where, you know, you're out there moving boulders and putting them in the ground with your hands. Um, we have energy core crews where you're learning how to make buildings uh, more efficient for California. Um, tons of stuff, miserable conditions, I mean, you're outside, right? You work outside, so that comes with working in the 100 degree weather. I mean, you guys know what the weather's like in California, right? Super hot. And then in the winter, it gets super cold. It gets windy. Um, one of my most favorite miserable conditions that I like to talk about that I experienced was we were out in the middle of the Mojave Desert and we were out in the middle of nowhere and we were building a trail and you're, you're living outside in these projects, right? So you eat outside, you sleep outside, whatever, but we had just like blankets of gnats. And it <laughs> like, it doesn't sound like something you'd wanna experience, but to me, it was so cool because now I get to go home and tell people about that, right? So miserable conditions, that's what we're talking about. And more, you get, trainings and you get trainings that people typically have to pay to get trained in. So chainsaw training, has whopper training, um, really, really cool, valuable stuff that'll help you in your career. And that's where that and more comes in, right? So that there's our motto. So this is just kind of talking about transforming lives of young adults, protecting and enhancing California's environment and making California an even better place for all. Um, it's true, I, I, I've been on crews where we're building trails and now I'm on a fire crew. And regardless of what I'm doing, I always have people coming up to thank me for what I do. So making California an even better place for all, it's true. And people see that and they're very thankful for that. Transforming lives of young adults, I mean, I that happened to me, so. Protecting and enhancing California's environment, we fight fire, we protect the land. It's really, really important stuff that we're doing out here and it's, it's fun. We were established in 1976 by Governor Jerry Brown, kind of a cool fact. Um, so yeah, I just kind of want to elaborate on the kind of stuff that we do. So we have, so right now I'm, I run a fire crew. So we go out, we, we train you guys on how to fight fire. And during the summer and sometimes even during the winter, we go and, and we, we fight fire, we put the fires out. We're the first people out there and we are legit. We're out there fighting fire. And it's really cool because you don't have to have the experience. You come in here and we train you for everything that you'll need to learn. Um, when I first joined this program, I was on a trail crew. So we would go out and we would camp for eight days at a time. And we would just be out there camping and we were at our work site already. And we would build hiking trails. And I have some pictures at the end to show you guys to kind of elaborate on that. So, so we have the fire crews, we have the trail crews, uh, certain centers, like I said, have the energy crews. We have specifically at our center, we go out and work with Caltrans a lot. And it's really cool because it's kind of like an on, like a daily interview to go and move on and find a career job with these people. So really, really good opportunities that are offered here. And it, it really helps to get people networking and hired on to have a really, really good you know, state job or federal job and things like that. So we're the oldest and largest conservation corps in the nation. We have 
approximately 120,000 core members. And we've spent over 75 million hours of work improving and protecting California's natural resources. This right here is another little model that we have, and it really, really encompasses. Oh, oh. So it encompasses what we stand for to protect and enhance California's natural resources and communities while empowering and developing young adults through hard work and education. So that's another thing, um, that education part. If you guys know people that might be struggling to get into a school and get their diploma, or you know, they can't find a place to get their high school diploma, we offer that as well. We have an urban core charter school and you come to work and every day after work, if you need to get your high school diploma, you, you go to school. And it is one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. Like I've seen people come into this program thinking like they would never get their diploma. You know, they've struggled so hard and within months they're graduating. So it's not a requirement. You don't have to be a student. So get your diploma, come here, start working. Or if you don't, or if you know somebody that needs, that needs assistance, send them over and that's one of our really cool opportunities that we offer here. Chelsea, can I just ask you if, if you are somebody that's looking to get your high school diploma through the CCC, you have to be 18 years old, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Um, possibly, I don't know if it's still an option, but I've seen people join a little bit before they turn 18 and they don't actually join the Conservation Corps until they turn 18. That could be an opportunity, but I don't know if we're still doing that. So it, it, either way, it's worth applying. All they can do is tell you, sorry, you have to wait a couple months. Um, so yeah, these are some of our partners that we work with on a daily basis. So we work with CAL FIRE, US Forest Service, BLM. I specifically work with the Bureau of Land Management, um, Fish and Wildlife, California State Parks. And this is important because like I said before, you're basically doing daily on the job interviews with these people and they remember you. The CCC is really well known throughout the state. And, and when you tell people that you work for the CCC, they're gonna be like, okay, like I wanna hire that person because they know what we do and they know the trainings that we provide are really valuable and that they're very useful when you go to work for these agencies. Um, AmeriCorps is another agency that we partner with. And so if you join the CCC, you come and you can sign up for AmeriCorps. And what AmeriCorps is, is it's an opportunity to get scholarships for school or school related expenses while you're working. And it's amazing because some people join AmeriCorps and they they work for AmeriCorps and they get the scholarship, right? But here in the CCC, we're gonna pay you that monthly stipend and you can also be in AmeriCorps and not necessarily have to do anything extra. And you're gonna get not only that paycheck from us, but you're gonna be working towards gaining scholarships with AmeriCorps. And it helped me, I, I got, I think like, I wasn't a core member for very long and I, still got about $6,000 in scholarships to help me pay off student loans. Um, but you can use that for like trade school if you wanna learn to be a welder or get your commercial license or anything school related, you can use these scholarships to help you out. So volunteerism, this is something that we're super proud of because we volunteer a lot. Um, some of the projects that we are some of the volunteer events that we've done are they've been super fun and it's for me it was kind of like a perk because I was able to do all this stuff that I never would have done on my own um, and the CCC kind of motivated me to go out and help and help my community and get involved and that's something to me that was very gratifying um, and and you know, it's not all just hard work. So we've had volunteer events where we go and sit in the audience for game shows and 
we go and we help create memorials for people and really, really good stuff to help the community. And we help with like community gardens and things like that. And, and it's, it's really great. It's something that I'm very proud of and that I think a lot of people feel the same way about that. Our core is diversity. Um, the conservation core is 24% women. And to me, that's important, um, especially on my crew. I see a lot of women come in and feel like, you know, they can't really, they can't really do stuff because a lot of these jobs historically are all men. And, you know, that's okay, but it's been really, really amazing to see women come into this program and not have the confidence and all of a sudden they're a firefighter with BLM or they're a firefighter with Cal Fire or they're cutting down trees with a chainsaw and it is really amazing and we get people in this program from all walks of life you know different countries and things like that and the diversity of this program is something that I absolutely love and I think you guys would also love it. So I hit on this a little bit earlier. We do a lot of specialized trainings and they're on the job trainings. So not only do you not have to pay for these trainings, but we are paying you to take them, right? So the chainsaw trainings and stuff like that, the fire trainings, you know, people typically have to go to school or pay or get waitlisted to try to get these trainings, but we're giving them to you and they're valid if you want to apply them to a job in your future. That's like, that's, for me, that's one of the biggest things about the CCC is the trainings that we provide and how valuable they are and how much other jobs and career jobs are going to, um, it, they're gonna give you an edge so that you're more likely to get hired on in the future. So this is one of the biggest things that we do in the CCC, especially during the summer, is we respond to emergencies, right? So on these emergencies, you could be gone for up to 21 days, right? Maybe sometimes even more, but that kind of hits back to that low pay part of the motto, right? On these emergencies, you're making overtime. So we've gotten it to a place where you make some pretty good overtime on these emergencies because you're working 16 hour days typically. And it's awesome because you're out there helping people, right? One of the main emergencies that we go to is base camp. So you're supporting the camps, you're supporting the firefighters, you're giving them their water, you're rolling their hoses, you're giving them their lunches, right? And it's, it's great because it's a huge, huge networking opportunity. So you're out there and you can talk to these firefighters, right? Maybe you're not sure. Maybe you don't know if you wanna be a firefighter or not, but you're out there with all these agencies and you can talk to them. Or maybe you're into mapping or geography or weather. And there's so many people that are doing so many different things on these emergencies that you have the opportunity to talk to because you're there helping out. And it's, it's great because they see you and they see the hard work that you're putting in and they'll remember you. So that's that's one of the main things. But of course, we've we've done stuff where we respond to earthquake disasters, floods, hurricanes. Um, recently, when COVID was really really bad, um, we responded and we helped out at the food banks, and we helped out at vaccination sites, and we respond to oil spills. Um, and it's it's amazing again because we we train you. You don't have to have the experience to know how to do this stuff. We're going to train you. And by the time you get out there, you're like, oh, okay, like I can do this. I'm a pro. And it, it's, yeah, it's really good. It's really good opportunities. <laughs> so this is what I'm doing now, fire response and prevention. Um, we have had so many responses where we're initial attack. So what does that mean? It means that we are the first people on that fire line. Like this fire starts, 
and we're there putting it out. We're not somebody that comes in behind and just, you know, cleans up after or whatever. Like we're the first people on that fire and we're the people who are going to stop this fire from getting gigantic, right? We're those people who are going to stop this fire from burning somebody's home or, or burning a historical ranch, right? And it, it's so cool because it could happen anywhere. Um, I've traveled with this job all the way across California. And I have seen things that I never thought I would see in my life. I've seen things that I didn't even know existed. Um, and I only saw those things because I work for the CCC, right? So, so many, so many good opportunities and it's really exciting. And these fire crews too are, we're giving you these trainings to be hired on eventually later again by BLM by Cal Fire and the experience that you get here it's so valuable again we just talked a little bit about base camp support but it's one of the main things that we do during the summer and it's great opportunities you have a lot of experience on these emergencies and, and working for the base camps and it's very gratifying Flood protection. So again, this right here, this little picture, it's a wave wash protection. And we train you, we train you to do this so that if in the event that there is a flood, you go out there and, and you're the one stopping the flood, right? And it's just really, again, very gratifying to know that you're helping your community. You might be helping somebody be able to still live in their home, right? Just by the work that you're doing and the work that we're training you to do. A little bit more about our wildland firefighting. Um, just some of the requirements. You have to meet the physical fitness requirements, right? You have to work on fire lines to stop and slow the spread of fires. You are gonna earn pretty much all your wildland firefighting certificates. We call it the uh, basic 10. And it leads to jobs with Cal Fire, US Forest Service, BLM, tons, tons of fire programs that myself, I've had like, 10 people get hired on from my crew with BLM, with the Forest Service, just by being here and coming to work and getting trained and having a good attitude. And it leads to jobs. So this is the Energy Corps. I don't specifically know too much about our Energy Corps, but it's a really cool opportunity that other centers have. Um, they, again, they get you these certificates that help you lead to jobs with environmental energy services, solar companies, government agencies, where you're gonna, you're gonna build your career and make good money and get good benefits and get a good retirement plan. That's what everybody wants, right? So we help our forests, we try to keep them healthy and we do that by doing fuel reduction and controlled burns and things like that. And again, we're training you to learn how to do this stuff. So this is another cool opportunity that the CCC offers. Um, it sounds kind of intimidating at first, but, a, and it, it's not a requirement. It's just something that you do if you decide that you want to. Um, and it's called backcountry. So backcountry, you go out and you live in this, beautiful uh, either national park or state park and you're living there for about six months and you go and you, you're just living off the land right you don't have a cell phone you don't have really anything that you, there's no contact to the outside world during backcountry and again this is not a requirement it's just an opportunity that we have if you are interested in it but people come from backcountry and they, they can't stop talking about it because they're so proud of what they did and they're so grateful for the opportunity that it provided them and, and it changes people's lives, right? And it gets them ready again to go out and, and get jobs. And it, it's amazing because people are paying and traveling to go visit these national parks and you're out there building it. You're building these trails and it, it's, another really, really amazing opportunity that the CCC offers. 
other centers, ours doesn't, also have a culinary program. So if you're interested in becoming a, a chef or a cook, you can go and do the culinary program. And they, again, they give you the certificates that you need, leads to jobs with restaurants, commercial kitchens, et cetera, et cetera. And in these culinary programs, you're preparing the meals, breakfast and dinner for your crew, for your community, right? So that's another really cool program that we have. Trail building and maintenance. This is something that I did for a really long time as a core member and it, it taught me a lot about work ethic and you know, it taught me a lot about myself and it was one of the most amazing opportunities that I've ever experienced. And these trails, most of the time we call them spikes again, you're camping for eight days out in the wilderness. And, you know, a lot of times you don't have showers. <laughs> so you're just out there again, living off the land and, and kind of learning how to survive in the wilderness. And it, it is so much fun. I can't stress how much I love building trails. And it, we do that a lot here at the Inland Center. Um, right now we have crews in the Pacheco State Park and I built trails in the Providence Mountains, and I'll show you guys a little bit of pictures later. But again, really, really gratifying. And it teaches you so much about how to be successful in, in your futures, right? And how to just work hard and get dirty and, and you get in shape too, if that's something you're interested in. <laughs> it really helps you get in that, that good physical shape. So we do a lot of landscape creation and maintenance projects as well. Um, right now we have a crew on spike and they're, all they're gonna go is go out there and plant. They're gonna plant trees, they're gonna plant plants and it's helping to restore the land, right? You gotta get rid of the invasive species and bring the native ones in, the ones that are supposed to be there. And this is work that we're putting in that's really, really helping our land and it's helping our community and it's helping California um, I guess become its natural self again, right? So, and then we also work with Caltrans a lot and our, our center specifically offers a Caltrans internship. And with this internship, you don't report to our center anymore. You report specifically to Caltrans. So you're working with Caltrans every single day. And then I would say, 99% of our Caltrans interns get hired on with Caltrans. And you guys can like look it up or Google it, but Caltrans makes bank. <laughs> so that's a really, really good job that you're just going and you're working for them and you're doing an on the job interview, right? It's, they're seeing you work every single day. And you know, at that point, of course, it's kind of up to you. Like, if you go out there and you work hard and you take the initiative and you show up every day, Caltrans is going to want to hire you after that, right? They want good people. They want reliable people. And it's a super easy opportunity. And then after that, it's really just on you. And you can pretty much decide like, okay, I want to get hired for Caltrans. I'm going to do really good. And most likely, yeah, you're going to, you're going to get hired with Caltrans. Fish and wildlife habitat. This is another one that I don't really know too much about, but I know that our centers offer this and you get to work directly with fish and wildlife. Um, I've known people that have gone and done this program and they get hired on and they're super happy. They go out and they work on the lake every day and it's just insane. It's the coolest opportunity. So additional career training. We offer first aid CPR. Everybody in the seas gets um, first aid CPR trained. Wildland firefighting, Cal OSHA 10, energy efficiency, uh, forklift operations. I don't know if you guys saw Fabian earlier, but he got to drive a forklift at a fire one time and he was just out there, you know, carrying these pallets on the forklift. And these are opportunities that you don't really get other places. Um, Hazwapper. Hazwapper is so expensive to get trained on your own and we're, we're offering it to you. We're, pay, we're paying you to get this training. Let's 
this is my favorite slide in the entire presentation um, because not only does it mean a lot to me, but I've seen other people experience this as well, not only as a core member myself, but as a supervisor. So CCC offers training for success beyond the CCC, personal growth, life skills, work maturity, technical skills, leadership, and financial literacy. For me, when I first joined the CCC, I, I didn't think that I would ever have the ability to get a, like what they say, a real job, right? I didn't know how to interview. I had no idea how to build a resume. I had no idea what it meant to have a good work ethic, right? But I came to the CCC and I had made up my mind that I was gonna show up every day. I was gonna work hard and I was gonna get a job out of it, right? And I learned that here. I learned what it takes to have work maturity, right? I, I learned how to, and my sister can tell you, I don't like to talk but here I am in front of a bunch of people presenting right now, right? And I can tell you that this job has helped me mature and it's helped me build these skills that have helped me to be extremely successful. And I started out, I was 24 years old when I joined this program and I joined as a core member. I applied online and I was terrified. And now here I am five years later as a civil service, uh, I work for the state, and I'm a supervisor and I'm, I've gotten this far because of the CCC and the things that the CCC has been able to teach me. I never considered myself a leader, but I learned how to be a leader here. And like I said, this slide is my favorite because it really just encompasses what we do and what we do for people. And all you have to do is show up and wanna be here. You know what I mean? So. The CCC, it, it really is, it's an amazing opportunity. So this is just kind of talking about some of our CCC alumni and people that have gotten hired on past the CCC with state and federal jobs. We have people that come into the CCC and now they're business owners or lawyers, contractors, teachers, park rangers, firefighters, and it's really cool because they send us these pictures and they're like, thank you guys. Thank you. If it wasn't for the C's, you know, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be working for Caltrans or working in my favorite state park or for the forest service. I wouldn't be a firefighter if it wasn't for the CCC. And that it it's, happens constantly. We see so many people go on and get these really great state jobs and they're so happy and grateful to the C's for what we've been able to help them do, right? So these are just some of the success stories. Um, this person joined the CCC and now works for a windmill technician, or she's a windmill technician and works for World Wind Solar. And she said, go into the CCC with a positive attitude. Take advantage of the CCC, stay true to yourself and have an open mind. Really good advice. Jason works for Old Sacramento State Historic Park. Again, somewhere that somebody would have to pay to go and camp. This person joined the CCC and now gets to get paid to go there every single day. And he said, the CCC instilled in me a sense of urgency and work ethic that goes beyond the call of duty. That work ethic I carry with me to this day. And then Joseph is now a firefighter for CAL FIRE because of the training and the experience that the CCC was able to offer him. Um, like he said, the CCC is the best way to get hands-on experience. You get paid to do it. You can't really pass this opportunity up. So that is the presentation. Um, if you guys don't mind, I wanna show you guys some pictures of stuff that I've experienced personally and kind of tell you a little bit of background on them. So, can you guys see that? No. Oh, you can't see the pictures? No, you might need to stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Um, while Chelsea is doing that, I just wanted to say if you guys have any questions, um, please put it in the chat. 
and then we'll open it up in a few minutes to try to answer some of your questions. I had a couple people already direct message me and say, I really want to do this program. <laughs> so that's exciting. We're going to give you a little bit more information on how to reach out and do that. Um, for my counselors that are on here, just keep that keep this in mind as another opportunity for our 18 year olds or students who are close to being 18 and maybe a little off track for graduation that they can go into the CCC and get their high school diploma while they're getting paid and learning all of these skills and um, you know getting on this path to hopefully a future career. So the diploma track is something that's offered at the C's, but you you do have to be 18 or at least close to it. So I'll let Chelsea take over and then we'll answer some more questions. Yes, thank you. All right, so this picture here, I love this picture because it's something I never really thought I would ever see in my life. Um, this is my crew standing in knee to waist deep water cutting this brush um, with a chainsaw and what we were doing here was kind of opening up this little water reservoir because there's a an endangered frog in there and somebody was going to come in behind us and try to capture these frogs and take them somewhere where they would be it would be a more su suitable habitat for them um and i just love this picture i wanted to show you guys because i i never thought people stood in water and cut things down with chainsaws i just thought that was so crazy but it's something that I never would have known of or experienced had I not been a part of the CCC. And it was really nice too, because now we're saving this little frog, right? Uh-oh. Is that, was my screen going crazy or was it just me? It's fine on our end, but we, okay. did you switch pictures? No, not yet. Oh, okay. okay. Sounds good. Uh, this picture right here, this is my crew actually fighting a fire. Um, we had to cut line in this thick, thick brush. We had to cut it all out and we had to make this little opening here. And then we were wetting it down so that if the fire got here, it would not it would be less likely to burn the rest of this, this land. Um, I, I love this picture. I don't know. I told you guys I'm passionate, so. <laughs> So this picture here, this was the first project that I ever went on in the CCC. And to this day, I, I've been able to go back and see this and it, it feels like home almost because I did, I, I lived there for a long time and this is where I, I grew up and this is where I learned how to be a good worker. And this is where I learned how to be successful. And this is the Providence Mountains. And um, at the end of this trail, you have the Mitchell Caverns. So this trail was closed down to the public for over 10 years. And we came in because the public was angry. Like they loved this trail and they loved going to see these caverns. And they're like, you need to get this reopened. And the state parks hired us to build this trail and make it safe again for the public. And it was so amazing because I got to go out there and do the very first spike. And I got to be also on the very last one where we had a grand reopening of this trail. And we had, so the founder of this trail, their names were Jack and Ida Mitchell and why it's called the Mitchell Caverns, right? And we had their great, great, great grandchildren come to this trail and they were crying and thanking us for what we had done and for working so hard to rebuild this trail and get it reopened to the public. And it's kind of cool because this is where I, I met this woman. And at the time I, I was like, I think I want to be a park ranger. So people were there from so many different agencies just to go to the grand opening of this trail that we built and reopened. And I, I spoke to this woman and I was, I went up there and I was so scared. And I was like, um, are you a park ranger? And she was like, yeah, duh. And long story short, she ended up giving me her business card, offering to look at my resume and help me build my resume to become a better applicant for the park ranger program. 
And that's just because I saw her at work and decided to go up and talk to her. And it, again, this is one of my absolute most favorite projects. And these rocks, like you can see, we're, we're putting them in the ground with our hands, right? It's just insanely gratifying and something that'll always be very close to my heart. This picture, I just think it's cool. That's me. <laughs> I just wanted to show off. Um, but this comes with a cool story as well. We were, so typically fire assignments last 14 days. And on the 14th day, you go home. So this was day 14 of an assignment and it was in September. And you guys know September in California is still really, really hot. And we're out in the middle of the desert and it was day 14 and we were getting lunch. And I just remember being so happy and excited that I was going home that day and that the assignment was almost over. And we get back into the vehicle and my radio starts going off. And I was like, uh oh, you know, there's gonna be a fire. And all of a sudden I hear Inland Crew 5. And that's my crew. And I was like, oh my gosh, like we're gonna get initial attack right now. Like they called us over the radio and this fire is like raging and it was crazy. And we didn't get the, to this fire until maybe 5 p.m. And we were out there all night. And we had, we had done a hike in the morning to just keep ourselves in shape. And it was a tough hike. And it was really funny because our crew boss is like, go harder. You're not going to fight fire after this. I promise. And little did he know that we were. And this fire right here was on a hillside that was extremely steep. And not only do we have our 45 pound pack, but we have our, our tools and our, the rest of our gear. And we're climbing up this mountain after we had already done our morning hike. It was already day 14, we're exhausted. We had already been on like three different fires on this assignment. And here we are climbing the hill, you know, basically hands and knees. Meanwhile, we're still having to cut line as we're going up this hill. And it, it was just amazing. And I like, to me, it's so cool that I get to tell this story to people now. I always tell people that, you know, like when I wanna sound cool or like when I wanna like impress people, I tell them stories about what I do at work because that's the coolest thing, you know? I don't talk to them about what I did in college. I don't talk to them about the sports I play. I talk to them about work because to me, there's no better opportunity than, than what we experience here. And this was the fire, all this orange, it was right over that hill and we were right there pretty much face to face with it. This is kind of a funny picture. Um, this, was on, this was on another fire assignment. It was like 125 degrees this day. So they actually didn't want us to go up and start working until a little bit later, but we had just had an opportunity and our crew boss taught us how to make a stretcher to carry somebody out out of tools and our Nomex shirts. And that's not something that I would have ever thought of had it not been for the CCC. And it worked. You can see we're carrying her out. <laughs> She's perfectly fine, but we wanted to test it. We had to test our work. Chelsea, I'm gonna stop you to ask so you can answer a few of these questions because I know some people are having to go, but um, what are the physical requirements that you talked about to be a part of the CCC? So to be a part of the CCC, just to join, there are no physical requirements. Um, you can join and yeah, there are, there are no physical requirements. There aren't physical requirements until you wanna join a fire crew. I believe that's the only crew and opportunity that we have here that have actual physical requirements. And, and then, for that, oh, go, ahead. oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. What do you need oh, for that? Say, the only physical requirement for my fire crew is walk three miles with 45 pound weight vest in under 45 minutes. I remember when you were training for that, fun. Um, we also got asked how much is the stipend? What do, you, what do you guys pay for somebody that's just joining and where can they go from there? And on that one. <laughs> so our monthly stipend, and this is before taxes, is $2,265. 
a month. Don't quote me a month. Yeah, don't quote me, but I believe after taxes, it comes out to 19-ish. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's just the stipend. So like I said before, when you go on these emergencies and stuff, you're making overtime. And then you do have to be 18 years old to join the core, right? Yes, that is correct. 18 years old. But if you're getting close, like she was saying, if you're, you know, 17 and a half and yes. definitely still look into it and start figuring out what you need to do to, so you can get started at 18. I believe you can apply once you turn 17 and a half. Okay. So if you're 17 and a half and you want to apply, still do it. And like I said before, the worst they can say is, sorry, you have to wait a couple months. Okay. All right. That's all I saw in there for now. We can definitely hear your passion. I just want those of you that are still with us to know, I don't think in almost 30 years I've ever heard my sister say this many words. So I'm pretty, pretty proud right now. <laughs> oh, <Jim. laughs> yeah, and that's seriously like that is thanks to the CCC because they taught me how to be confident. They taught me how to publicly speak and it's, has just been the absolute best opportunity for me. And I am so, so eternally grateful. Real quick, because I know people are getting ready to leave. How, how do they go about applying? Do they just go to the website and it'll tell them there? Do you want to share any information that they can? Yeah, so to apply, all you do is go to the website and it's ccc.ca.gov. Um, and it should say right there, apply now. Um, and I'm going to put my email in the chat. And if you guys have any, any questions or have questions on how to apply or, or anything about the program, please email me and, and I'll get back to you and we can chat about it. And thank you for having me. This was fun. And I'm excited to hopefully have some of you apply. Hi, it's in Shadow Ridge School, the best indie in the HD. Dude. He's making a list, he's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's not your nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. You better watch out. You better cry. You better not cry. And the music is coming to town.